my growing up mom who was proud to be part Mi'kmaq told me many things, including that I was adopted and that I was native. And later in life as an adult, she also told me some things that I've never shared out of respect for her that I hate sharing now, including that I may have been born on the wrong side of the blanket. This was her story and it has never been my place to share it. It's a phrase you've likely heard before, but what does it really mean? Sovereignty is the natural right of a people to govern themselves. Sovereignty means that tribes operate as independent nations within a nation. And did you know that there are 574 federally recognized native nations in the United States? All of these tribes have their own constitutions, laws, elections, and infrastructure designed to meet their people's needs. Their rights, lands, assets, and resources are their own. This is similar to how the United States government exercises sovereignty on behalf of its citizens. Tribal nations have been sovereign since time immemorial. Sovereignty is not granted, but rather it is recognized. The federal government recognizes tribe sovereignty through treaties. In order to make a treaty, two sovereign nations must come together recognize each other's right to govern their own people, and create an agreement. With or without the United States, tribal nations are sovereign. But if you need more proof, the United States Constitution, in addition to hundreds of treaties and Supreme Court cases, has repeatedly affirmed tribes' right to govern themselves. Remember, tribal nations have always been and will always be sovereign. Treaties are the supreme law of the land. The United States government's frequent violations of its treaty obligations do not change that. So blood quantum is an imposition from the federal government that is that has been used to weed out Native Americans. So the whole the whole idea of US federal policy has been to assimilate Indians, to rid themselves of the Indian problem so that land and resources could be obtained, right? Mm -hmm. And so blood quantum was one way that the U.S. government could do that. So if you if you didn't meet what they thought was some kind of purity test, then they could write you off, mm. right? Um, but that is not how uh, many um, Indian nations view uh, tribal citizenship or membership. It's through other types of cultural continuity, family relationships, and it's not about race. Um, that's been an imposition on us. As executive director of the Association on American Indian Affairs, we get tons of inquiries. Probably the top inquiry we get are people wanting to do DNA tests to determine what tribe they belong to. Mm. Um, so everyone seems to want to be Indian. Um, and even pe some people are, are emboldened enough to say, you know, hey, I did my DNA test. It says I'm Native American. Where's my Indian check? Really? So there's so many misconceptions about what it means to be Native American. That's a real issue? Uh, yes. Um, it, it, that doesn't exist, but there's some kind of of fantasy or myth that uh, many people in the U.S. have, have uh, kind of believe about Indians because we don't know. It's not like it's taught well in school. It, it's, it's not like this is part of a normal dialogue. If you really want to learn about your history and heritage, you have to do that genealogical research or a written constitutional government, and each one of them have their own eligibility requirements for citizenship. Mm. So you have to do your own genealogy. And then if you do find who you may be affiliated with, then you go to that nation and you talk to them about what their eligibility requirements are. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Buffy St. Marie? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. Time around 1961, Buffy promoted a false story about her ancestry. She gave inconsistent accounts over the years, but one of her main stories was that she was born on a Cree reserve in Saskatchewan, Canada. She did not know the identity of her biological parents, but she was certain they were of indigenous Canadian ancestry. Buffy's younger sister allowed her DNA to be tested, 
it showed that she was genetically related to Buffy's son. There is no way this could be true if Buffy had been adopted. Considering the evidence, do I think that Buffy was lying about her heritage? Yes, I believe that she was lying. People who engage in this behavior are sometimes referred to as pretendians. Why do people pretend that they have indigenous identity? Here I'm talking in general, not about this case or any specific case. It is reasonable to believe that the motive for this type of deception is assembled when a person is young. Perhaps their childhood experiences challenged their self-esteem, they didn't receive a lot of praise, and they could not find a way to feel superior. Contemplating their ordinary nature caused them discomfort, and they wanted to find a way to escape that. These individuals tend to be grandiose, have a sense of entitlement, and believe they are special. Pretendians tend to have a deep level of insecurity, and they are not confident about their abilities. This means that the idea of fairly competing in a marketplace is frightening to them. No matter what their vocation is, they desire to possess an unfair advantage. Often they believe they need and deserve this advantage. I think the idea of fabricating an indigenous ancestry comes from the discrimination that many people in this category endure. Selecting this heritage to impersonate gives the pretendian a sense of security. It's like a safety mechanism. They know that if they fail, they can always blame the failure on discrimination. In this position of relative safety, the pretendian can succeed in their career. They can take chances because they know they always have that safety net. Another benefit from selecting an indigenous identity is the idea of being part of a relatively small group. This strongly appeals to the person's desire to feel special. No matter what happens to them in their career, they will be special. No one can take that away. In a sense, this also operates like a safety mechanism. Back to Buffy's case, she once said, quote, I learned early on that what was absolutely true was not necessarily true for me, unquote. Some may be angry at Buffy for repeatedly being deceptive and not taking responsibility for her behavior, but her behavior aligns with what people can expect in the future. Buffy St. Marie was ahead of her time. Uh, number one, where are you from? Massachusetts. Number to the folk singer? Peggy. Well, I voted for number one. I've heard of Miss St. Marie before. I'm from Massachusetts, and, and I know that the real one is from Massachusetts. That's why I kept asking you where you were all from. Ah. <laughs> I voted for number three because it seems to me that I read that Miss St. Marie was from Canada and was adopted, or maybe I have the story... Then to Massachusetts. Then to Massachusetts. Yes. Everything Massachusetts. is from Massachusetts. 